Thanks for adjusting on the time, everybody. Up 15 minutes. We have a major announcement at 245 with the women's basketball program. So that was the reason for the adjustment. We will have an ASAP transcript today. And we'll have senior athletes after coach. Matt, am I good? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, let me switch you to host. All right. <laughs> I already had him up, Freddie. No, 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 no. I already had I can, him up. I can do Freddie Coleman. What's that? I, I'm doing a podcast tomorrow, too. Um, He's tomorrow. he's on at like 8 o'clock. I can so. Oh, okay. I like Freddie. I do the yeah, he's, versus of cancer thing with him and all. Yeah, exactly. Good dude. Okay, are we ready, Jerry? Yeah. Okay. Oh, now nah, how's that? That's probably better. I'm not hearing you, coach. Can you hear me?
Sorry about that. There it is. Okay. okay. All right, we'll go to questions for Coach McCaffrey. Please raise your hand. We'll get started. Go ahead, Tom Kakert. Fram, a lot of uh, a lot of teams in Nebraska's situation might have kind of folded up a little bit, you know, with COVID, the pause they had, you know, the not much hope for going to postseason, but they've really fought. What have, what's impressed you about them? You know, I think you got to give a lot of credit to Fred. Uh, you know, he, he, when he got sick and when they first paused, he called me to, to tell me, and he, he said, you know, we're going to make up the games, you know, we're, we're all systems go, we'll, we'll get better. And, and you got to give him credit. Not only have they done that, they played well and played really well yesterday. One, uh, what, three out of the last four or whatever, uh, really playing well, sharing the ball. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, making a statement with, okay, we had, we had, uh, we had some difficulties we had to overcome, but we're going to go ahead and, and finish out the schedule and we're going to continue to compete. You got to respect that. Mike Claus. Frank, you've been asked a lot. I know in the last few of these that we've done about the, the way the defense has come around and really made a difference, but could you detail how the, the progress has been made and the results have been gotten? You know what, Mike, it's, it's not complicated. It really isn't. Uh, you know, you got to, you got to get down and guard the ball off the dribble. You got to get back. You got to rebound. It's all connected that way. You know, when you only give up two offensive rebounds to Ohio State, it's a very good offensive rebounding team. You know, that that's a big statement. You know, how we defend in ball screens, we're doing a much better job there. Uh, you know, that stuff's hard to guard when you have other, other actions going on. So I think our guys have really locked into uh, – personnel to scouting and really, you know, committed to playing defense on all levels, which is, you know, obviously transition half court, regardless of what defense we're in and, uh, and fighting people on the glass. Mark Emmert. Yeah, Fred, it looks like you're going to be able to get uh, all 27 of your games in this year that you had scheduled, I guess. What, what does that say about your program? How have you been able to do that? When a lot of, a lot of teams can't say that. Well, I think it starts with, uh, the commitment our institution made, our department, to to daily testing. But then it, it really comes down to the discipline, I think, that our players showed and a commitment to one another to, to be safe and to do everything we could in terms of making good decisions off the floor uh, so we can show up and practice every day and we can show up and play on all of our games. So I'm really proud of our institution, our department, you know, Mr. Bart has done an unbelievable job along with, with Bruce Harold and, and Kevin Warren, our commissioner, uh, to put us in a position where we could make this happen. Don Doxey. Yeah, Fran, what, what do you see in Nebraska now that's different from a couple of weeks ago? I know Mayan has really come on and everything, but what, what else are they doing differently now that they weren't doing before? The, the, they're uh, really sharing the ball, making really good decisions playing very unselfishly, I think. You look at the last six or seven games, and they've played really well. But even before that, I mean, it looks, sometimes you look at a team's record and you think, wow, they lost a bunch of games in a row. But every game, they're right there. So, you know, you can kind of see it coming. They were going to win some. Uh, but, uh, I, I think uh, Thorman, you know, he, he, he was always a good player, and uh, he wasn't playing that much, and he started playing more. That made a big difference. Like you pointed out, Allen's really a good player. Uh, they've gotten a great play out of their center position. Uh, and they're just playing more consistently, I think, with their decision making, their ball movement, you know, their compete on defense. And they're a tough team. You know, they just happen to be in a really good league. Bob Howe. Brianna, we haven't had a chance to ask you. Could you tell us kind of, I know this could change, but what Jack Nungy's timeline is for getting back, how he's dealing with this mentally? And then third part of that is where's Josh at and is there a chance that he can help you out uh, just as another big body in there? 
Yeah, uh, you know, Jack had surgery today, uh, went well. You know, we expect him back sometime during the summer, maybe the middle, maybe the, the end of the summer. We expect him back next year. He has a very positive outlook on this whole thing. Despite all what he's been through, you know, he's been amazing in, in, my, in my view. Been doing this a long time, really, really proud of him. Uh, we're all pulling for him. You know, Josh is getting better. You know, he, you know, he didn't make the trip last uh, to Ohio State. He wasn't feeling good, so he's. Uh, we'll see how he is today. Uh, you know, but the other guy that uh, can jump in there is uh, is Chris Murray. You know, I think he's ready uh, for a shot, so that's a possibility. Uh, we can also play smaller. You know, put put Tony Perkins in there. He's a really athletic wing that that really attacks the glass. So there's a lot of ways we can go. Obviously, it starts with, you know, our top three subs, you know, Keegan, Patrick, and Joe T. Uh, you know, we were able to play those eight and, and do okay with it. Uh, but uh, at some point, we're going to need another big guy. You're right. And uh, I'm comfortable, or, or I should say getting more comfortable with the possibility of playing, you know, Josh and Chris in particular. Tom Kaker. Friend, this will be the last uh, two home games for uh, for Luca and for uh, for Jaybo. Um, can you kind of? Uh, I know you'd love to have fans there for him, but can you kind of talk about you know maybe not having not having the fans there to honor those guys and um, and what they've meant to your program? Yeah, I mean, we all wish the place was full and they could be honored properly. You know, we're going to do the best we can. Uh, pretty much what we always do, you know, but unfortunately not, not even the parents are going to be allowed on the floor. They're going to be up, uh, you know, hope to honor them uh, at another time, maybe at the banquet, maybe next year at a game when it's full again. Uh, but uh, those two guys have been so instrumental in, in so much success in our program's history. Uh, you know, I'm just, Thankful to have had the opportunity to coach both of them and you know, watch them grow and develop and become record setters, essentially. So, uh, you know, we'll do the best we can on Sunday for them. Uh, but uh, at some point, they'll, they'll be honored again, I'm sure. Mike Kloss. Continuing along that line, Fran, uh, Jordan has said repeatedly how he appreciates that, that uh, you believed in him from the get-go and took a chance on him where other major programs maybe weren't as interested. And then you were in so early on Luca, uh, and, they, and uh, Luke and his dad have mentioned that repeatedly. Just if, if you could go back five years, six years, and talk about, in a nutshell, what you saw in those two guys. Yeah, you know, I had the, the luxury of watching Jordan at a very young age. He played with Connor. Uh, they went to uh, Las Vegas to play, and uh, he was terrific there. And obviously watched him throughout his high school career because they used to play against West High two times a year, but then they would play in the, in, in the fall leagues and the spring leagues. So I, you know, I really watched Jordan uh, develop. And, uh, you know, when you're doing that, I mean, the reality is you're, you're comparing him to other players that you may have seen or your staff is recruiting that are from other States and, and, and play on other AAU teams. And you, and you're, you're going through the process. You know, and I think what, what happened with Jordan was you know, he just consistently played well, no matter who he played against, you know, whether he was playing uh, you know, for his high school coach, uh, whether he's playing for, for Hank Huddleston, you know, with the Martin brothers, uh, he just always played well. And whenever he played against high level guys, he, he played well. And I think it just got to the point where it was a no brainer for me. Uh, you know, I, I can't speak to why others didn't think so uh, because and it wasn't like he ever played poorly in any game that I ever attended. And I saw him quite a bit. 
but the other thing is, you know, he has a, a competitive side that uh, most people don't have. They just don't have it. And he has it. And he's fearless. And I think you saw it when he was a freshman. Some of the performances were amazing in his sophomore year, which is one that, that I will always remember because, I mean, he gutted it out. I mean, Connor got sick and had a red shirt. We didn't have a point guard, and he's playing on two bad hips and plantar fasciitis. I mean, that's, it. that's the epitome of toughness right there. He just fought through and never complained one time. I didn't even know he had anything wrong with him. He just showed up and, and played. Uh, so to, to watch him enjoy the success that he has and, and you know, break Jeff Horner's record was, was a tremendous player here. I coached against him uh, and be where he is on the scoring charts and three point makes. I'm just, I'm really happy for him, for his family who I've gotten to know really well and very proud of him. Now, Luca, different situation coming from a different part of the country. I, you know, I've said this many times, I was fortunate enough to watch him play against Connor, who was on an, an AAU team that was a provisional EYBL team, uh, which is the Nike organization. And uh, he just impressed me the first time I saw him. Then I was fortunate enough to see him again in St. Louis at the Nike Elite 100. And then I saw him at Nike the Top 100. And then I saw him on the, on the circuit. He played for Chuck Drizell the chance to, to watch him for, for his high school team. And again, uh, for whatever reason there, 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 that I couldn't figure out, there were knocks on him in the recruiting process. But what was interesting, and Frank and I would talk about this, uh, we both knew that in the end, he would have everybody there wanting him. And I, and, and I think it was important, maybe not so much to – to Luca, but to Frank to see how, how his hard work paid off with the recognition that he deserved. So by the end of the summer of, of his junior year, before his senior year, when really the recruiting decisions are made, he pretty much had everybody that wanted him. What, like you said, we were in first in terms of a BCS school that said, Hey, you're our guy. And uh, we never wavered from that. And, and, you know, the, the whole getting in early thing, I think a lot of people think, well, they think that goes a long way, and it does, but it goes a long way because you develop a relationship. It's not, well, we remember the first school that offered. You, you develop a relationship in a way that, that I think builds trust, and, and that's, that's what we had. You know, Luca and, and his, his parents and his high school coach trusted us, and, and that's a tremendous feeling as a coach. And then you bring a guy in with tremendous work ethic. You watch him compete at the highest level, uh, achieve phenomenal success. And, and most importantly, you, you watch both these guys, you know, really, really have fun and enjoy this experience uh, and watch them become talented freshmen and ultimately uh, team leaders. And, uh, and that's what you want as a coach. You want your, your leadership to come from within the locker room and not just from the coaching staff, because if it does, it never works. So I'm it's, really, really happy for both of them and proud of both of them. It sounds like uh, because your son was a player, was a college, a uh, major college prospect and, and played on these teams and traveled around that you, you got extra benefits from that. I mean, the chance to see these other two guys and get to know them a lot better, a lot sooner. Yeah, I, I think it would have been a little bit different with Jordan. I would have seen him in a number of places probably anyway. Uh, but you're right. I mean, I, 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 you know, the first tournament we went to was, was after the recruiting period, during the dead period. I was able to go because Connor was on the team. You know, Luca, again, you know, we, we got an early peek at him, uh, now, he was playing in, in events that, that the coaches could go to eventually. But uh, not only did I get to see him early, I got to see him play against really good players. Uh, same thing with Jordan. So it made, you know, you're, you're watching these young kids play against high-level guys that are highly rated and perform at the level that they did. 
you know, people have said, oh, you know, it's interesting that you guys were in early. You saw something nobody else saw. I, I, I really, all I ever saw these two guys do was, was compete and win. That's all they've ever done. So I don't think it was anything miraculous. It was just, a, 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 I think, a level of respect that I had for both of them and a desire to get them into our program because they knew what that would lead to. And that's uh, a terrific locker room presence, uh, camaraderie, and, and success. I have time for two more questions. Mark Emmerich, go ahead. Yeah, friends, staying on the Luca topic, um, I'm not sure if you have any say in this, but do you believe he should have his number retired here? And if so, what does that say about an athlete when they get that kind of an honor? Very rare. I mean, I, I've had I've had a few. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm I, I, don't, I don't think you're 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 wrong on that one. I think that's a no-brainer. That'll happen. It's a question of when. Uh, well deserved, and and. Uh, I'll look forward to that moment. And so, you know, so will he and his family. But right now, I think his focus is not on that. But I appreciate the question. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll happen, Mark, without, without a doubt. And finally, for the last question, we'll go to David Eichel. Go ahead, David. Yeah, Fran, when, when Luca got here, there were, I think, seven Iowa natives on the roster. I think Dom Ewell is the only one that was out of the Midwest. And to see Luca, you know, come back for a senior season, give up a lucrative overseas deal and plenty of professional opportunities, I think speaks to the way kind of the Iowa community has embraced Luca and vice versa. Can you just speak on how, how, how Iowa's either embraced Luca and vice versa and that just relationship in general? Yeah, I, I think it's been a great fit for, for everyone. Uh, from, from day one, I think our fans looked at him and said, this guy's special. You know, we all talk about his work ethic, which is not matched by many. And we go back to a sophomore year and what he overcame health-wise and, and, and the success he's had the last two years. I think sometimes that gets overlooked. But I think there's, there's a healthy appreciation of, of our fan base and, of, you know, his teammates for what he's done. And uh, when you have a guy like that who's unselfish and, and – just really speaks in the locker room in a way that, that commands respect. It's, it's, it's something that is, is special to see. And, uh, you know, for, for me, it's something that I, I appreciate every day. Uh, you know, as you guys know, it's a long season and there's a lot of ups and downs and there's a lot of things that happen in particular this year that, that, you know, anything short of, of that kind of commitment and understanding uh, and, and just you know, overall love for each other. Uh, and, and I think the season could have gone sideways, not necessarily in terms of wins and losses, but, but health-wise, uh, you know, there's just never going to be any selfishness in our locker room, you know, with, with the guys that are in there and with Luca, you know, as the leader. So, you know, the recognition he's gotten has been incredibly well-deserved and something that uh, I'm very proud of and very happy for him. All right. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate okay. your time today. Hey, Austin, can you hear me okay? Yep, gotcha. All right. Guys, we have the first of our seniors, Austin Ash. Go ahead and raise your hand with questions for Austin.
Go ahead, Mark Emmert. Uh, yeah, so, uh, can you just give us uh, a little bit of a sense of what this journey has been like for you? And uh, I mean, are you ready for it to end? Does it seem like it's ending for you? Uh, yeah, it's gone by extremely fast. Um, coming in freshman year, um, registered that year. Obviously, we didn't get off to the best of starts, but that year felt like a little longer than these last three have been. Um, but yeah, I, I really haven't thought about um, the end of the season yet. Just trying to enjoy the moment, live in the moment. But it's definitely gone by crazy fast these last couple of years. Mike Kloss. Austin, what made you want to be a walk-on at Iowa when you could have played college basketball a lot somewhere? Yeah, the uh, decision process was uh, difficult, obviously. It is for everybody. But for me, um, I grew up a Hawkeye fan, um, always dreamed of playing for the Hawkeyes, grew up watching guys like my, uh, Matt Gatons and always coming to those games. Um, I grew up in a Hawkeye family. So when uh, Coach McCaffrey called me and offered the walk-on position going into my senior year, I just kind of jumped on the opportunity uh, to be a part of the program. And I really don't regret it at all. Um, I love, I've loved every opportunity I've had here and uh, cherish all, all the moments I've had. Don Doxey. Yeah, Austin, you're, uh, you're going out with two very special seniors, Luke and, and Jabo. <clears throat> I wonder if you could talk a little about them. Um, they're, they're very different players, very different kind of guys, but just kind of talk about what they bring to the team. Yeah, um, I've known Jordan a lot longer than Luca, and I'm obviously really close with Luca. I've been living with him for a while, but uh, um, Luca obviously brings uh, hard work and dedication and, and is a leader by example um, and also is vocal as well. But a guy that's always first in the gym, last one out. Um, I spent many weekends in here with him, um, especially freshman year, sophomore year, just grinding, uh, working on getting better, trying to turn this program in the right direction, which which it has. Um, and then a guy like him, another guy who leads by example as well, um, just the way he plays the game, always has head up, always teaching other people, whether it's in the locker room or on the court, um, helping people, trying to get people better. Um, both those guys, just great leaders and have helped this program so much. Mark Gimmert. Yeah, Austin, uh, can you tell me, why do you wear the number 13? Um, originally, I was going to wear number 24. Uh, I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan when I was a kid. Um, and I think when I, when I came, Brady Ellingson was wearing number 24, so I had to uh, – review my options, go over them. Um, and 13, I, I like Steve Nash growing up. I really like the way he played. Um, so just kind of not, not a lot of meaning behind it, but just went with it because of that. It seems like it kind of fits your personality though, aren't you? Kind of the more, more zany kind of guy? Uh, a little bit, yeah, um, for sure. Pat Hardy? Yeah, Austin, um, who wins the three-point shooting contest between you and Jordan? Uh, I, I would have to pick myself there. Um, I'll never bet it against anybody besides myself when it comes to shooting. Obviously, Jordan, I wouldn't uh, take anybody else against them in the whole country. Um, the guy's proven it time and time again, shooting bombs and shooting at a high percentage and has hit so many clutch threes throughout his career. But uh, I'd have to take myself over him, and I think he knows I would say that as well. Okay. Tom Kegert. Austin, when you get in, it's usually uh, the shots going up and the bench goes crazy when you, uh, when you hit one. What's that like for you? It's a great feeling. Um, all these guys know that I put in all the hard work and practice, preparing for scout team and helping these guys out. To, and they see me on the bench getting excited for them when they're making big plays and we're on runs and stuff like that. So it's nice to see that energy reciprocated. Um, it really feels good. I always try to take a look over at the bench when I hit a big shot or towards the end of the game. It just feels good to see those guys uh, getting excited for me. And our last question for Austin comes from Mike Kloss. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I, uh, how long have you been roommates, friends with Luca, and what do you do for each other uh, off basketball courts? Yeah, uh, I didn't roommate with Luca freshman year in the dorms, but we were one floor apart, so we were always with each other. And then after that, we pretty much lived together um, for the rest last three years. Uh, we just became really good friends um, on the basketball court. Um, he's taught me a lot, and I feel like I've taught him a lot of stuff as well throughout the games. I'm always telling him different moves he can do. Um, or how many fouls the other, other opponent's big men have, trying to help him out. And off the court, he's just a guy that's always there for me. I try to do the same for him, um, helping, helping each other out through any situation possible. And I think that friendship will last a long time. What, what can you tell us about him that maybe the world hasn't already heard? Um, I'd say he's a nicer guy on the court than he is a better player on the court. I've never seen – I don't know anybody that dislikes Luca. I mean, I, I have people that don't like me. I think everybody has multiple people that don't like them, but – 
everybody I know loves Luca. I mean, whether we're at High V or we're going to the grocery store, or even before he was even really great at basketball and was well known for it, everybody just really enjoys him. Uh, everybody loves being around the guy, and that's something that is really special. Not a lot of people probably know. All right, thank you, Austin. Appreciate your time today. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Hey, Steve, can I get uh, recording privileges? Who's that, Scott? Yeah. Uh, all right, you're good. Thank you. <clears throat> hey Luca, Luca, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. All right, we'll get started with questions for Luca Garza. Please raise your hand. Go ahead, David Eichold. Yeah, Luca, I think when you got here, there were seven Iowa natives on the roster. I think Dom Yule was the only one that was outside the Midwest. And obviously you gave up a number of professional opportunities coming back for your senior year. Uh, just how, how, how has the Iowa community sort of embraced you and why were you guys just such a good fit and how has that developed uh, over your time here? You know, I mean, I think as soon as I got here, I just really fell, fell in love with the, the university and the campus. You know, I just, the people around here, you know, it's, it was an adjustment coming from a big city um, and, and it's a lot different, uh, but you know, it's, it's really nice how it's different. I, I love both places. And, um, you know, once I came here, I just really, you know, the, the, I fell in love with everything. You know, I, I just you know, love this, this university and I, I've been very thankful to be here uh, for the time I have been. So, you know, I, it's, it's, it's really been uh, special. And I think all the guys on the team really, you know, welcomed me with open arms and, you know, made me feel like, you know, I was, part, I was joining a new family. And that's really what it's been since I got here. It's, it's really just a family environment. And I think, you know, people have taught me about, Iowa and just different things, you know, that I had never known. And I, I hadn't really been to the Midwest ever. <laughs> and, you know, I, I was a city kid. So, you know, I think when I came here, uh, you know, me in the summer, Austin Ash, you know, me and him were really close and, and, and he kind of just was like, kind of showing me, you know, what Iowa city is about and the same with Connor McCaffrey and, and obviously the older guys with Nicholas Baird and Jordan and Cordell and everybody. So I, I really, it was, uh, it was really cool um, to, to meet those guys and, and to be here. Mark Emmert. Yeah, Luca, it looks like now you're going to get all 27 of your regular season games in. Um, what has it taken as an athlete? What has it taken for you guys to get to this point where a lot of teams weren't able to do that? Like what kind of sacrifices did you have to make? You know, how, how difficult was it to go through all this? You know, I credit to our guys. I think we've, we've shown a tremendous amount of maturity in our ability to handle, you know, th this kind of unprecedented uh, kind of time we're in. You know, me and Connor and, and some of the leaders on this team kind of had a meeting before the season started on what it's going to have to be like. You know, it's, you know, we 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 had to make sure that you know you're going home and, and then you're coming to the gym and that's really all you're doing. You know, you're, we can hang out with each other, we can hang out with other people. We can't really see family. You know, I haven't been able to see my dad like I usually can, um, and, and and obviously I, I haven't seen my mother in a while. So you know, it, it's it's, it's different, but, you know, you, you have to be able to, you know, understand that, you know, what your priority is. You know, we want to be able to play in March. We want to be able to play all our games, and that's the priority. And in order to do that, you have to be smart. You have to be careful. You know, can't be going out. Uh, can't be walking around downtown. You know, the, it's just a lot of things you can't put yourself in positions, you know, where you could potentially get sick. And, you know, obviously we don't want to put our coaches and the other people around us at risk as well. So, you know, it, it's 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 a lot different. You know, I think it's it's harder mentally on every basketball player because there's no distraction. You, know, you go home and, and and you go to the gym. That's it. You know, there's nothing else. There's no escape. But you know, I think for, the, for everybody on the team, you know, we love the game of basketball and we love the opportunity that you know is in front of us. Um, so it, it, it it's exciting for us. And you know, we we're a group that would do it whatever it took. Uh, to make sure that we can we can play all our games. And I think there's been a lot of teams across the country that have done a great job, and I commend everybody in the Big Ten because, you know, 
we only had, I think, you know, Michigan State and 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 obviously Nebraska being canceled or, or moved. And you know, when a lot of other leagues, you know, some some got some teams still haven't you know, gotten to 15 games. You know, it's just it, it's crazy. But you know, I, I just really commend everybody in this league and, and really thankful uh, for the Big Ten and having daily testing and all of that that has you know provided us the opportunity to play. Tom Kakert. Look, I know you're focused on bigger things this year, but um, we asked Fran earlier about retiring your number and, and he said it's a no brainer. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, that's, that's a dream come true. You know, I, I think when I you know, came to the university, you know, I don't think if you told me then that I would you know, be in a position at my jersey retired, I would have told you you're crazy. You know, I wanted to work as hard as I could, but and play as hard as I could, but, you know, for that to happen, you know, it's, it's, it's truly special. And, you know, I've, this place has given me so much and I, I just hope that I've given half as much back. Chad Lysko. Hey, Luke, are you familiar with like Ken Palm analytics? Yes. What uh, you guys have really risen up the ranks defensively in the last month. How would you, what's the best way you could describe what has changed in the evolution of your defense as a team? You know, I think the effort was always there. Um, I think the the execution and the ability, um, you know, to really stay connected, um, I think that was the part that was lacking. I think we always played hard, but, you know, our ability to be connected, you know, communicate, talk, and I think everyone just kind of, you know, after we dropped a couple of games, we, you know, when you look back at those games, you know, we realized our offense was good enough to win all those games. But we went through a, went through a stretch where you know, our offense couldn't score, and that's when the team made a run because we couldn't get stops to stay in the game. So we, we kind of, I think the whole team kind of just, you know, understood that there's one thing holding us back, and that's our ability to get stops. And, uh, you know, once we, I think the first game that we really, you know, played at that level of defense was at Indiana. And we obviously came short in that game. But the start of that game, you know, we were up 17 to four uh, when I got my second foul. And, and so that was just, you know, speaking to, you know, our, our ability to get stops and then go down and score. And, you know, our offense wasn't even great in that stretch. You know, it's just, you know, our ability to shut down other teams from scoring. Uh, you know, we know we're going to eventually score at some point. Uh, but, you know, I think and then you show games like Penn State where we're stuck at 54, both teams for like three minutes. Neither team could score. And that, and that just speaks to us being able to get stops when our offense is not as good. And I think that's one thing in the Michigan game, you know, we had that in the first half because, you know, obviously, you know, I wasn't great in the first half and, and our whole team, you know, we didn't shoot the ball particularly great in the first half, but we were still right there because we were able to get stops. And then obviously we got away from that in the second half. Um, but I think through the stretch, you know, we've just shown really a lot of resiliency on that end and, you know, just a lot of toughness on that end. And we've really committed to bettering ourselves as a defensive team. And we're going to continue to do that because we know, the better our defense gets, you know, the, the, the better we'll be and, and the farther we'll make it. Mike Hlaas. Uh, you had the thing with the cyst a couple of years ago and Jordan's had hip surgeries. These are not common basketball ailments. Do you sort of relate to each other on that level? And I mean, when, when you look at what he's done this season and what he's come back from, how do you evaluate that? You know, I, I think, you know, when I first got here and I started playing with Jordan, you know, I immediately understood that this guy was, this guy was tough. You know, he played through anything. You know, I think he's had so many different injuries, you know, whether it be feet or whatever that are actual regular basketball injuries. And I think, you know, that's something that, you know, I, I think we kind of share in common is just we're, we're, we're going to battle through whatever we can, uh, you know, until we hit a point where we're, we have to be told, like, you have to get surgery or this has to stop. You have to stop playing and, and get better. And, and I think that just speaks towards his toughness um, and his ability to push through adversity. Um, and I think, you know, it was the same thing for me. You know, I, I had no idea that, you know, I had um, whatever was going on in, in, in my abdomen. And then I found out and I had to push through that. And, you know, you've seen his, you know, thank God I had a you know way quicker recovery than you know, Jordan had to go through. Um, and, and I didn't have to get it done, you know, twice. And so that just that amount of adversity, you know, you have to you know, commend a guy who can push through all of that and then be able to come back and do what he's done for us this year and, and be our leader. And obviously, you know, control games from 
know, his passing and his ability to shoot the ball. And it's just, uh, it's, it's really nice to play with him. You know, obviously we missed him last year and other guys stepped up, but, you know, we, we always miss, you know, it, when he's not out there. So we, uh, I'm very thankful to play with a player like that. Don Doxey. Yeah, Luca, there's uh, obviously a lot of, uh, you're looking forward to a lot on Sunday and everything. You guys do another game before that. Is it, uh, is it a little tough to, to focus on Nebraska and, and what you got coming on Thursday? I, I don't think so at all, you know, especially when you, you, you watched the game last night and Nebraska beat Rutgers by 30, or they were up by 30 at some point. So I think we're all really focused on what we have to do. And uh, we know this team is good, um, and they've beaten some good teams in our league. And I think we're all we're all very focused because we understand, uh, you know, that you know if we win these next two games, we're putting ourselves in a really good position uh, in, in terms of March. So I think we're we all know that the next game on the schedule is the most important. You know, obviously, you know we we know this senior day is Sunday, but you know these are these are two more very important games for our group. Just uh, one or two more for uh, Luca. Go ahead, Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Luca, last uh, November uh, in a game against Penn State, Davion Nixon pulled kind of what some people call a Euro step on an interception return for a touchdown. And he was asked afterwards if he'd ever played you in one-on-one -on -one and who would win. And he said he didn't know and he'd have to body you up. Um, <laughs> have you ever uh, played Davion in any, in, in even just shooting around? And, and what's kind of your relationship with him? Because he was a first-team All-American def defensive player. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I've, I've grown closer to, to Davion, like the more years we've been here, but we were close as soon as, you know, I got here. And, and as a freshman, I think he came halfway through the semester into the dorms. So, you know, he was always a guy who was, you know, one of the nicest people I've ever met, just really outgoing, uh, very cool dude. And, and, and I got to know him really well. And he's, he's, he, I mean, this, this season, how he performed, how dominant he was, was really impressive to watch. And it was really cool to see, you know, I think I, I got really close to, you know, a lot of the guys on, on the football team, you know, my freshman year. And to see all of them, you know, we talked about Geno Stone, Tristan Wurz, AJ Epinesa, all of them just, you know, succeed and, and dominate. And obviously Davion doing the same thing. It's, it's been really, you know, cool to watch that. But no, I I, I don't think, you know, I, I'd been to the gym a couple times, you know, with AJ. And I, I don't think, you know, I ever got to see Davion play. I saw his, I watched the journey on him. So I watched his highlights and he looked, like he was, he was a tank down there and he was pretty good, but no, I mean, I think if he tried to push me out, then, you know, I, I, I try to shoot some jumpers and I will see how he would deal with that. But no, I, I think it would be a lot of fun. And I'm very excited to see where his career goes from here. Uh, he's a tremendous worker. And, and like I said, he's, he's a better person off the court than he is a football player, you know, and, and especially, you know, before this year when he wasn't, you know, uh, as dominant as he was this year, he was, you know, outgoing and, and I already knew who he was because of how cool of a person he was. So it, it's really cool to see, you know, how, how he's developed in his time here. All right. Thank you, Luca. We're going to move on to, uh, to our other guys. We appreciate your time today. We have Michael Bear next. Michael only has time for a couple of questions. He's got to get to uh, scout team. All right, Michael, thanks for joining us. We'll go to Don Doxy. Yeah, Michael, your, uh, your dad told me a couple of years ago he thought you had a future as a coach, probably more so than Nicholas did. <laughs> Just can you talk about what, what you are planning to do with your future? Is coaching a possibility? Yeah, coaching is definitely a possibility. It's something I've always wanted to do. I just fell in love with the game when I was young. And, you know, my dad and my coaches kind of always told me I was a little uh, ahead of my age in uh, my basketball intelligence. So that's something I've always wanted to do. Also being able just to relate to kids and help people reach their potential. And I think that'd be really rewarding as a profession. And one thing I've always said is like, if I was a coach for a profession, it wouldn't feel like work. So going uh, every day and coaching and being around basketball uh, would be pretty fun to do. How, how have the past four years prepared you for that, do you think? Oh, it prepared me a whole lot. You know, Coach McCaffrey is definitely one of the best offensive coaches in the country. And just uh, learning from him, all the plays we run and the way he sets people up and 
uh, kind of his philosophy has been really helpful. And then the rest of the coaching staff too, you know, we've had all of our assistants have also been head coaches. So they have a, a whole lot of basketball knowledge. And then also just learning from my teammates, you know, obviously Luca is one of the best uh, Hawkeyes to ever wear the uniform. So just learning from how he plays and also j -Bo and all these guys, just being able to be around them and learn how they played their position will also help me in my coaching career. All right, anything else for Michael? All right, thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. And we'll finish up with uh, Jordan Bohannon here in a second. All right, Jordan, thanks for joining us. We'll get right to questions for Jordan here in the last few minutes. Go ahead. Mark, Mark Emmert, go ahead. Yeah, Jordan, um, I asked Luca the same thing, but it looks like you guys are gonna get all 27 of your regular scheduled games in this season. Not a lot of teams have been able to do that. I guess, can you maybe as an athlete, tell us what it's been like for you to have to go through all this? Do you feel like you had to sacrifice quite a bit to get this done? And how did you get it done? Yeah, I mean, it's a testament to the sacrifices that we've made as a team. You know, we said from day one, back in, you know, early summer to August, around October, that said, I mean, around October is kind of when we locked everything down. We said we're going to, you know, focus on basketball, but we're not going to, you know, go outside and, you know, go downtown, go see people, go see our friends, go see our families even. And we said we're going to be focused on this team throughout the entire season. And because of we haven't had any pauses, that shows the testament of, you know, the guys in the locker room really sacrificing a lot and not, you know, going outside, you know, their social distancing circles. And, you know, it, it has been tough, you know, doing that for this amount of times, um, you know, having big wins and wanting to go see your friends, wanting to go hang out with your family after games and not being able to do that. It's kind of just been all, 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 all work the entire year and just continue to work on ourselves. It's, it's been tough, but like I said, you know, we've sacrificed a lot and we want to have it to mean something towards the end of the season. I think we're on pace to do that. Mike Kloss. Jordan, Austin Ash was on here a few minutes ago and he told us that he'd bet on himself to beat you in a three point contest. Who would you bet on? But, but more importantly, uh, I've watched this guy all year, the last few years, in fact, and it seems like he's as into these games as, as you guys on the floor and he talks to you guys a lot. What has he provided as a teammate? I mean, first off, like 
I, I know. I already know who's going to say that. If you ask Austin Ash anything, he's always going to bet on himself. He's one of the most confident guys I know, and that's why everyone loves him on the team. And that's what makes him so special to this team because uh, he knows his role. He, he, I mean, he's very, very skilled. You know, a lot of people um, talk, talk on his name a couple of times, you know, why he's on the team, you know, what's he doing on, on the Iowa basketball team. He's one of the most skilled basketball players that I've been around. Uh, one of the best shooters that I've ever seen. Uh, his shot does look funny at times, but it goes in more times than not. Uh, but off the court, on the court, he's one of the best teammates you can ask for, one of the best friends you can ask for, because he's all about Iowa. He grew up as an Iowa Hawkeye fan, um, loved, loved, loved the Iowa Hawkeyes growing up, continues to love the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll do anything for this team for us to win. We'll sacrifice anything. Um, and you see that on the sidelines when he's just cheering on the team, night in and night out, um, hoping for the best for his teammates out there. It seems like in the chances he's had to play, when he makes shots, nothing seems to give your guys more pleasure than that. Yeah, it just shows, like I said, how much we love, love him. Uh, he's everything you want as a, as a teammate. And, you know, I've said this a lot to my brothers, my, and Zach has said that a lot about his Final Four team. You, you need guys like that on your team to make – um, important runs late in the season, guys that will continue to cheer on your team, guys that continue to motivate your team when you know times are tough. And he's one of those guys that is always there to pick the team up, always there to cheer us on on the sidelines. Um, and a guy that's experienced, he's been through a lot as well. So anytime you have a guy like that on your team, it, it's a definitely a, sol a solution to have a great team chemistry and a great opportunity to make a deep run in the tournament. Chad? Are you uh, are you good with spending hopefully a month in Indianapolis? And I guess uh, on on the same note, are you just glad to be home this week for a full week before that happens? Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming as soon as this Wisconsin game gets done in the weekend, that uh, I'm not sure when we're leaving. I would imagine you know, coach would want to get there as soon as possible to you know limit us at any uh, um, chance of getting outside contact before us ending up in Indianapolis, which makes sense, but. You know, I mean, it is what it is. It's what we signed up for. Um, and I, I guess you could say we didn't really sign up to play in a world pandemic, but um, we're here and we're playing and we want, you know, to make the most of it. We sacrificed a lot since the first part of the season. Um, and we want, you know, our sacrifices to show. And we put ourselves in great position to do that. Um, spending a month in Indianapolis, there's going to be obviously some downfalls to it, not seeing families, friends. Um, but what great opportunity it is for us to do something that, you know, will ever probably ever happen again in our lifetimes of playing in a world pandemic and playing in an NCAA tournament, you know, that will hardly have any fans, you know, that probably won't ever happen again. And you know, it'll be fun to kind of be along for that ride. Tom Kaker. Jordan, kind of a twofold question. You've been at your brother's senior days. This one's going to be a little different. What are your thoughts? You know, it, it's got to be weird for you um, just because you've experienced those with your family before. And this one's, going to be different and two what what is on your shirt there it looks interesting oh this is a tater tater tough shirt we wore them a couple years ago yeah um, the kid that we saw in the stands from Williamsburg that you know meant a lot to this program you know just wishing the best for him and his recovery um and, and his family just praying for him every day but yeah this is a sentimental t-shirt for sure because he's been close to our program for a while um and you know seeing him after the game the other day uh, was really special and something I'll remember for the rest of you know, my life for sure. I'm not sure what your first part of the question was. I can't remember. It was about just being a different senior day. Uh, just be, You've gone through those with your brothers. Um, now you're going to have yours, but it's going to be way different. Yeah, it's definitely going to be different. Not having my mom and dad you know, by my side, walking out of the court, you know, all the blood, sweat, and tears I put on Carver Hawkeye Arena and um, just thinking about the, the ride that I've had you know, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. It's been an incredible opportunity that Coach McCaffrey has given me. Um, and I, I can't I can't believe, you know, the journey that I've been on. Just truly blessed. I thank God every day for, you know, how, how he set me up for life to, you know, provide me with this platform to inspire the younger generation. You know, put me with a family that, you know, my, my, my mom and dad raised me the right way. My brothers gave me this competitive edge. It gave me a huge advantage when I first stepped foot on campus. Um, yeah, it's going to be really bittersweet, but truly grateful and thankful for everything that has happened in these last five years. All right. Thanks, Jordan. We appreciate it.
Appreciate all your time today, guys. See you Thursday night.